All right. So let's see. Cindy says, absolutely loved your course. It's so well done. Learned so oh, thank you, Cindy. All right. That's awesome. Okay. So well, let's go ahead and dive right in. Um, and we're going to talk about the first thing, which is those, uh, those pattern tiling lines that happen in pattern fills. So this right here is a pattern fill. It's just a rectangle with a pattern fill swatch applied to it. So this, you know, I could apply solid fill or gradient fill. In this case, it's a pattern fill. And this problem is unique to pattern fills. So let me go here just to set us up and I'm gonna turn on a different view here. And then I'm gonna zoom in and see if I can find one of those lines. So we are on Zoom right now, so it can be really hard to see these um, with the resolution of Zoom, but I'm taking my cursor here and I'm kind of tracing down. And you may see like a white, a very faint white line, you know, that's going through this blue background of this pattern here. Okay, Ari says you can see it, great. So this is the problem. Um, and basically this is a bug uh, that happens with anti-aliasing of this art when we're displaying it in Illustrator. And so you may or may not see this, but the problem actually comes out when you export these patterns. So let's say I wanna export this here. I'm gonna to go to file, export, save for wet. And here it is. Um, and if I zoom in, let's see. If I zoom in here, right now I'm using art, art optimized anti-aliasing. And this is the solution to the problem. So usually when you come into Save for Web, and you are saving a PNG or a JPEG, um, you, this will be on by default. But if you've used something different, you, know, you may need to change this option here. So to make sure that you don't see anti-aliasing lines in your patterns, then you wanna choose art optimized anti-aliasing. If I switch this to type optimized anti-aliasing, then we're gonna see those lines come out and this time it's different. It's here in the white area. If you can see, as I move my little cursor across there, um, there's a little light blue line inside of that. Um, let's see, Gail says, would you recommend PNG 24? So yeah, I mean, I it all depends on the art. PNG is really great for very solid graphic art like this. And I would definitely want the highest quality. So I would choose PNG 24. Um, PNG eight introduces this um, color table and that's good for certain things, but, but choose PNG 24. But if it's something that's more, uh, you know, a lot more tones and things like that, maybe JPEG will be better, but you can zoom in and see very quickly what the quality is um, like this. So um, that's a problem. We don't want to use type optimized anti-aliasing. We definitely want to use art optimized. So for those who need a little background on anti-aliasing, let's say I just turn it off because I have the option to do that here, just choosing none. And what I have here is now um, un-anti-aliased art. So it originated with blue and white. And uh, when there's no anti-aliasing, I, I have only blue pixels and white pixels. And that's why everything looks kind of jaggedy. Well, I'm really zoomed in here. Let's go down to like 200 and even at that small of a size, you may not see it as well on Zoom, but to me, it looks kind of crystallized and, and bumpy like that. But if I turn on anti-aliasing, especially art optimized, then everything looks smooth. And the reason that is, is because what anti-aliasing does is it produces some of those pixels in interim shades between white and blue. So it gives you the illusion. We see some light blue pixels in there. It gives you the illusion that this is smooth art. So that's why we like anti-aliasing and we're gonna choose art optimized here. I'm gonna cancel out of here and just sort of back up and show you why this problem is a little different now than it used to be. So for me, you know, in more recent years, I've been noticing like, wow, I don't see those lines anymore. Maybe Adobe fixed that bug and actually they didn't, but we're not seeing them as much, even though they're still there. We're not seeing them as much because uh, 
Illustrator uses GPU preview just by default. For a while, you could turn it off and on. You know, you might want to switch out of GPU into CPU. But for the most part now, if you have a system that's compatible with Illustrator, you know, the current uh, version of Illustrator and a fairly modern or recent computer, then you'll never have to make this choice. The GPU is just on by default. So the GPU stands for graphics processing unit, it's just a piece of hardware inside of your computer. And when Illustrator makes use of that to preview everything for you, let me go here and turn it on. Let's go to view using GPU. So here I am in CPU. This is the old way of looking at things. It's central processing unit. So it's just the computer processor itself, not the graphics processor. Um, if I switch, so here we are, we see the line there in CPU, but if I switch to what is now the default GPU, those lines disappear. So the benefits of GPU and why Illustrator has been moving in that direction um, is, you know, we get this nice, smooth, animated zoom. Um, I can do, oops, let me go here. I can draw like this, like a rectangle, it's very simple. Um, and you just see how it, um, it's sort of drawing live. You see the whole thing. Um, but if I switch over to CPU, um, I don't have that animated zoom. I'm kind of just doing, you know, stepping in and stepping out. If I draw that same rectangle, I'm not even seeing it until I release my mouse. And if I resize it, um, you know, I can only see the outer edge until I release my mouse. So CPU is just not as fast and it doesn't show you as much, um, of a beautiful display as the, as the GPU does. And part of the side effect of that is that we don't see those lines. So if I go back to, I can see a line right there here in CPU, boom, boom. But if I switch to GPU, they go away. So you most likely don't really even have to worry about this. It's turned on by default, but this is why it's a little deceptive. You may not see it in your pattern fills. It's only when you export that those things will be revealed uh, if you don't choose art optimized anti-aliasing. All right, so let's take a look. Unless anybody has any questions, I wanna jump into showing you uh, how this affects your work in Photoshop and something that you can do there. Um, as a solution. So let's say this is my pattern fill and I wanna add it into a mock-up that I have in Photoshop. So here I am in Photoshop and I've got this mock-up here and I wanna copy and paste that um, artwork with the pattern fill applied into my mock-up. So I've copied it to my clipboard from Illustrator and that just that rectangle with the pattern fill. And then I'm gonna just paste it here in Photoshop. Let's see, maybe I didn't copy it. Okay, there it is. I'm gonna copy it, move over to Photoshop and paste it. Huh, there we go. That was strange. All right, so we have a choice when we paste into Photoshop, you can paste it as pixels or smart, object um, and now we have this new feature layers paste as layers so we're going to look at that but let me just go ahead um, and paste it the way i used to do it which was either smart object or pixels either way it's the same thing i'm going to go ahead and click okay i've chosen smart object and when i paste this in and i hit enter and i'll just clip it to this uh shape here so we can see what it would be like as a mock-up. Um, and I see a pattern tiling line. You can see it really well when I zoom in. All right. Um, so what's happening here, let me undo that and just show you again. I'm pasting as a smart object. It would be the same with pixels. Let's do it that time, that way this time. Notice here at the top of uh, the window, we have this checkbox for anti-alias. So you can choose to anti-alias your art, which is the selection that I had when I pasted that in, but it's bringing along with it that same problem that we have 
you know, in Illustrator that we fixed by choosing art optimized anti-aliasing. But here we don't really have that choice. If we want it to be anti-aliased, that's what we get. We wind up getting that little line there. So let me delete this. Now what we can do, I'm gonna do the same thing. I still have it on my clipboard. I'm gonna paste Commander Control V. This time I'm gonna choose paste as layers. So this is this new feature that came out in what Adobe Max that was at the end of October um, in the latest version of Illustrator, I mean, sorry, of Photoshop 2022. So now you can paste from Illustrator and everything that you have will come along with its layer structure. Um, and there's so many great reasons to do this. I mean, there's just so much goodness um, in there. But uh, this is one of the things that I just recently sort of tested out and discovered, and it's pretty cool. So right here, if I you know click on this little information button here, it says preserve Illustrator attributes, layer structure, and relative positioning. So there's a learn more link here. Um, you should click on this and it will tell you a lot more about this feature, but let's go ahead and I'm just gonna click okay. And it's doing its thing. And now it asks me, some of the content in this selection will be rasterized. Well, I did go and look at that link and it gives you a sort of a chart of all of the Illustrator content and what is maybe not compatible. And one of the things that it says in there is that you know, if you have a pattern fill, it will be rasterized. So the pattern fill itself isn't gonna come through, but that art will be rasterized and that's okay. I'm gonna click continue. And it comes in bigger, it's at the right size and everything. Um, and now I'll just clip it again to my mock-up shape. And if I zoom in, this is anti-aliased, but I am not seeing that pattern tiling line. Now it's bigger, uh, but even if I, let's see, move this, I'm just gonna shrink it a little closer to where it was before in the other examples, there's no line in there. And so it's a good alternative. It's sort of a Photoshop solution to that. If you wanna work with pattern fills from Illustrator and Photoshop uh, by copying and pasting, just paste as layers. Um, Gail says, my old lady iMac can't take the latest version of Photoshop. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah, they are kind of moving ahead by leaps and bounds and there's a lot more. Um, there's a lot of great features, but they take a lot more um, processing there. So, and Tamara's here. Hi, Tamara. Nice to see you. Um, so anyway, use uh, paste as, uh, I mean, paste as layers uh, to get this into Photoshop so that you don't see those pattern tiling lines. Now, let me go back to Illustrator. And uh, I have another example here. Um, these are some floral fills and these were created the way that I uh, show you in, in Pattern Power where what we're doing is uh, building up a couple of fills on a single rectangle, which is something that you can do using the appearance panel. And with this artwork selected right here, um, it's the same as the last example we were looking at, except for this one, it's a pattern fill and a solid fill on a single path. So if I turn off the solid fill in the background, you can see this pattern has you know, a clear background. I created it in pattern editing mode, and then I'm adding a solid color behind it here. So in the appearance panel, you can see these fills, you can add extra fills and you can you know, turn them off and on like I'm doing here. Um, so if I copy this, I'm gonna go over here, paste, paste as layers. This is, a, this is one example where I thought it was really obvious. Like here, this version of it doesn't, I don't see any lines. I'm not even gonna bother clipping it. I don't see any lines in this. So this is the new way that I just showed you. Um, but let's go ahead and I'll paste it in. I just wanted to show you an example with a different uh, kind of, you know, a different kind of pattern that has a little bit more going on. And this, when I look in here, there is a line right there. And it's pretty obvious on this, um, on this one. And so, you know, a lot of times you can kind of fudge it and you don't see the lines because of the final size of your Photoshop art, 
Um, but it, this is one of those cases, like this is a pattern where it's going to really show up because it's got this white flower here and it's just showing that gap there. So uh, the paste as layers just fixes that. Um, Tamara says, I fortunately have to go to my job. Oh, all right. Well, get, uh, enjoy your day at work and you can always catch up with this later when we post it. Um, so anyway, Gail says, is that a blip or does it need to be fixed? So it's only, you know, it's just that anti-aliasing bug there. So you don't have to fix it. Um, just paste as layers. If you're going from Illustrator to Photoshop and if you're going from Illustrator just to a export, use art, X, art optimized anti-aliasing. <music>